Welcome to episode 51 of our Road to Unicum, and today we review the Type 64. This is the Tier 6 Premium Chinese tank in World of Tanks, and it has a reputation for being overpowered, so let's compare it on tanks.gg to the other Tier 6 light tanks. It has best in tier damage per minute, with a reload that approaches 3 seconds, which is just insane. The gun depression is tied for best at minus 10 degrees, which means it's a very comfortable ridge fighter, and it has the top forward speed of over 72 kilometers an hour. But what really sets us apart from the other light tanks at tier 6 is 390 meters of view range, which is as good as tier 9 light tanks, and it lets you get to the 445 meters of max view range without having to run food. It's a big advantage and you can outspot other tier 6 and 7 light tanks. So we're going to look at a couple battles. First up is a tier 8 Paris battle, and this map is one which is often misplayed by light and medium tank drivers. Uh, it is mostly a city map with some vision areas, and there's some camouflage that you can create. I'm going to show you a trick. Now, regardless of which side of the map I spawn on, I play the crossing, cross spotting, and like in this case, that's going to be spotting around J7 for their heavies and brawlers heading south and you'll get perpendicular you know, flanking shots on them on their side armor, which are easy penetration. So what I want to try to do is both spot the heavy tanks heading down there so we have a sense of who's going down there, but the other thing is soften them up so that our guys can win the brawling in the south. Now a lot of players tend to play the A, B, and C lanes. It's very campy because what you have are little hills with bushes and then lots of open space. Now notice I'm intentionally knocking down these trees because while the trees are standing, they don't offer soft cover, but the second I knock them down, they become bushes. Now, I do have to be careful there while the scorpion did not spot me. He saw the tree fall down. So one thing is you don't want to knock down trees when there are people looking at you, because then they'll just blind fire the bush, right? But because I knocked down some of these trees before they could have gotten over here, what they're going to see from their side looks like a series of bushes, and they won't know which tree I knocked down. So they can try blind firing, but they're likely to miss. and. This T28 prot, this friendly player and I put a lot of damage into that KV-2, and then we wrecked that scorpion. So we've gotten off to a really good start already. If you're going to spot from here, you do need to kind of look like I'm periodically taking a look to make sure that the T28 prot and I are not in each other's way, because I may need to pivot and move too, right, in case I get spotted. You can see, like, a number of our tanks are kind of camping along the two to four lanes, and, you know, like I said, it's very campy, and if you try to cross the field like their enemy Type 64 did, you can get wedged into a spot and you can take a lot of damage. Now, I've moved up the middle here. You have to do this carefully, but notice I stopped to keep those bushes between me and that Stur Emil so that he couldn't see me even though I'm spam firing at him. And same thing goes for the Scorpion. He can't see me. I'm able to predict where he's going, get a nice leading shot to finish him off. Now, looking at the minimap, I've got two options. I can go and flank north or south, get perpendicular to the opponents. What I want to do is take out this FD-304, which is a very annoying RD to deal with because of its high rate of fire. And he had inadvisedly pushed too far forward, right? So there's no way that he can safely exit once I get this flanking position. Now the dangerous thing about hanging up on the shelf is that you can't come here and stay here and fight a lot if you've got a soft turret. If you've got a strong turret like the Russian mediums do or an American medium, you can stay there and stay mostly hull down, but obviously this tank is paper thin armor, so I don't want to do that. Now, if they were playing the map correctly, the opposing side would have tanks right here around E8, kind of the mirror from where the T28 prot, my friendly and I started. But because they don't, this is essentially leaving a big hole in their defenses and I'm able to put this SG-100Y on auto aim and then finish them off. One thing you'll notice is before I pushed east along the E lane, the SG-100Y was looking in my direction, so I waited until one of my tank destroyers fired at him and backed him off. Now, if I had the opportunity, I'd knock down that bush so I could come back here whenever I want and hide behind it. Uh, I am too close to that E2, and at the time when he and I spotted each other, that tree wasn't in the way, right? So, I'm going to come back here later. What I decided instead is, you know, looking at the map, I can see that our Sturamil and our T-28 Prod are both pushing south, so we have a really good opportunity to very easily flank these remaining tanks that are in the south part of the map, and because I am perpendicular to my allies, I'm getting really easy flanking shots to put down the KV-2, and then my team finishes off the T-2064. 
So this map really is determined in general by how your brawlers do on the south side of the map, and then whoever plays the middle lanes, the E, F, and G lanes, more efficiently. In this case, you know, they didn't really protect the E, F, and G lanes, and I took advantage of that, took out their 304, and then it now pushed up. That last shot was a tracking shot on the Tiger P. You know, the, the golden duo is to deal damage and track your opponent with the same shot. I would say if you're at a distance where, you know, hitting that front or rear drive wheel is going to be tough, or, you know, if by shooting at it, if your gun's inaccurate or they're, or they're moving, you might miss their tank entirely, just go for damage. Aim for center mass or, you know, lead them appropriately so your shot will hit center mass. And if you get lucky, you might track them, but the most important thing is to make sure to deal damage. But in that particular case, like with the Tiger P, the shot when I tracked him, since he was backing up, I kind of hit toward the very front of his tank, so I hit his drive wheel, but not where there is a hull. So, you know, it is good to track tanks, but obviously tracking and damaging, that's what you want. Now looking at this, I can either push the zero or the eight lane. The zero lane, they've got two tanks. I don't want to go brawl with my soft face those tanks, but I can isolate the Panther based on the position of the four remaining tanks. So the E2 can't see me through this wall or can't shoot at me. And then this Panther is too busy facing the tanks in the field. Now, because I am so close to him and his tank is so big, I am aiming every shot at that drive wheel because even if I missed, it's still likely I'm going to get a penetrating uh, shot that damages him and then I've been playing a super clean game and then like I go full tomato mode here I stop for some ex inexplicable reason to shoot at the E2 I should have just kept driving I mean he's got a derp gun bad gun handling and then I compound my mistake by overestimating this tanks acceleration and so this tank really only has two notable uh, negatives for light tank. One is that the ammo capacity is relatively limited and because of the high rate of fire you can run out of ammo. It's happened to me multiple multiple times where especially if you're trying to engage from range you can run out of ammo and that sucks obviously. Uh, the other thing is that even though the top speed is really good this tank has relatively low power to weight ratio compared to other light tanks so it's a little sluggish as far as getting up to speed. Once you get there you can fly but it's something to be careful about. So this is a tier 7 Erlenberg battle. This is just a one tier spread, you know, tier tier 7s and 6s. And what I'm going to do, I play this map in a, in a counterclockwise rotation regardless of what side I'm on. So if I'm in the north spawn, I play the two line. And you guys may remember this back in the episode that I did on the T-37. Because you'll want to spot, if you're in the north spawn, you want to spot the tanks heading west toward the castle. and by the same token, if you're on the south spawn, you can come to where I am with this bush and then spot their tanks as they cross along the B lane and C lane to get east. Now, as it turns out, a lot of their fast tanks have already crossed over the 9-0 lane. I happen to see one of the, the slower tanks, it looks like the E8, but because we've got some tanks lit, I want to come up here and start to fight. And notice, I will be reasonably close to their tanks, right? Within a couple hundred meters, but I am trying to use these bushes in front of me and I'm using these little depressions. I do back up to let that 12T go by, right? But like this, a shot like this on this T-34, because there's so much bush cover, I can fire and I might not get spotted. So I see a 304, go ahead and put a shell into him. And check out what our friendlies are doing. The AMX 12T and our I think the T-34-1, they went all the way around the corner. And so they're forcing an engagement where they're outnumbered. That, of course, makes absolutely no sense, and they're essentially yellowing and throwing their hit points away. It's a real bummer for me. There's no way I'm going to go down there. Sometimes people are like, oh, you should have come down and helped me. You know, that would just be incredibly stupid. And, you know, even though this tank has pretty good damage per minute, because the hit point pool isn't that large as a light tank, and because anything that hit it will pretty much damage it, it's actually very vulnerable to high explosive as well. You've got to conserve your hit points. Like here's an example, like this enemy type 64, he came up here and it's not necessarily a bad thought, but once he spots me, he shouldn't go up there and he shouldn't, sure as heck shouldn't back down like that where you know, I'm gonna get an easy kill shot on him. Now our Cromwell's in a bit of a tough spot because he's gonna get out DPM by multiple tanks and you know, our Stur Emil takes out another tank, but our Cromwell what he really should have done is the second that our two guys yoloed around the corner, maybe go up around the corner, get a couple shots in, and then run away bravely. Just staying there, you know, he left himself in a position where they're eventually going to push him and kill him. Now the DKV, I don't have to kill him, 
just want to get a couple shots into him and soften him up because our arties are going to be motivated to help on this side of the map. There's a spot there are very squishy takes out on this side and now that my friendly tank destroyer is dead, I'm the last line of defense. So like if I die, our arties are going to be in trouble. And so a lot of times you'll notice with players, they'll of course, you know, operate in their own self-interest. So, uh, you know, obviously the arties are going to want to help me. Otherwise they're going to get wrecked. Now, this E8 does something which is pretty smart. He switches over to high explosive ammo. You can see that, you know, based on that explosion. Because I am a paper-thin tank. So we've mostly cleared out East. It's 1v1 versus me in this VK. But, you know, of course, there are the multiple RDs on each side. We've still got three and they've got two. But right there, that was kind of an unfortunate sequence for me. I get splashed by the RD, and then the VK hits me. So. Before they already hit me, I had enough hit points that I could have gone around and just out DPM the VK. But, you know, once they both hit me, they, you know, they double tap me as far as damage, there's the risk that that VK could kill me. So I backed off, and it's okay, I don't need to force an engagement. Our Arties, you know, were supporting me, and so they took him out. One really interesting thing, you know, early in games, you want to try to spot as many tanks as possible while not putting yourself at too much risk, right? You want to get a sense of their deployment and hopefully work in some damage safely. You know, hopefully your team will give you some spotting damage and hit the targets that you light. As the game progresses and there are fewer and fewer tanks on the map, you can control which tanks that your team is going to kill by what you choose to spot. And sometimes what, you know, light, light tank drivers will YOLO and be very foolish throughout battles, but I see this in late game situations too. Now you might be thinking I should go after their arty, but the problem is they've got multiple tanks remaining and I don't know where their Achilles is. So, you know, plus, you know, I'm, at, I'm two shotable or potentially one shotable depending on what hits me. Um, one really nice thing, the aiming reticle was updated or improved a few patches ago to take into account distance and penetration angle. So the color that you see from the reticle does reflect the penetration if you're to hit right where your reticle is aiming. And so you'll notice here, I, because I don't know where some of their tanks are, their Achilles and their T20, I didn't push across the river. I just sat there and kept taking shots at the T20 at HTC. And also, by virtue of not spotting other targets, it's going to force our arties to hit that T28 HTC. So it may sound like a weird concept, and certainly your friendlies may not understand what you're doing, but I was trying to make sure that we would kill the T28 HTC because that is kind of a you know tough tank. And then their T20, obviously I have to back up and counter him. If if he were a better player, what he should have done is push down and, and try to spot and kill our arties, because they had a chance of pulling this match back, or better yet, come after me and bully me. Right, and even after he dropped from my spotting, I could tell that he was still there because I knew that I tracked him and every time I fired, there was that little notification saying that the cap points were being reduced. So I knew that my shots were still landing and probably damaging him. Okay, now that we've thumbed them out, I can go ahead and move up a bit. And then, again, because I don't know where the Achilles is, and because I have these easy shots on this tank destroyer, flanking shots, I don't have to push up any further. Right, and I mention this because light tank drivers can over scout, they can overexpose their tanks. I talked about this a lot in episode 41, which was my guide on light tanks. And so while it may look odd, like I'm sniping or camping, uh, this is totally intentional. I have now dropped that J Panther down to one shot territory and one of our tank destroyers finishes them off. So it's been kind of a hectic game, you know, back east, but I was kind of picking my spots using the train. And, and obviously with a tank like this that has the 10 degrees of gun depression, that's a lot easier. And then this sequence here makes me pretty bitter. So two arties fire at their enemy arty. One aims on the opposite side of him. The other ends up landing and splashing me. And he's now not only stunned my crew, but dropped me into one-shot territory. And I end up dying here. So I understand that arty is inaccurate, but they didn't have to shoot that arty. He was going to be dead because I was going to kill him. They could have shot the Achilles. Or if they were going to shoot the enemy arty, they could have aimed on the opposite side like one of the artists did, instead of splashing me, basically putting me in a position where I'm now one-shottable. There was a great thread on Reddit about a week ago, and an RD player was explaining that you should really never try to splash your friendlies. Like in that situation, even though he splashed and got me killed, we were going to win the match, but I have been splashed by friendly arty, resulting in my death, which eventually resulted in our team dying. I did want to share one really cool milestone that I reached recently, and you can see this on wattstats.org. 
This site I like because it does two things. It shows you your mastery badges by tier. And then there's this nice table here which shows you your performance by class. So I recently broke 60% win rate in my light tanks while averaging over a 3.5k W and 8. And keep in mind I've been doing this playing with 100% silver ammo and I have learned a ton playing light tanks. And what's, what's cool is I've been able to get all of my light tanks between tiers 5 and 10 to a Unicum W and 8, so 2450 or above. And I'm still learning a lot about playing light tanks and I've been getting a lot of good feedback from you guys so I'm really happy to share this information and hopefully little tricks like knocking down trees to create your own bushes will help you in your in your gameplay. And I want to give a, a big shout out to Lenticular to thank him again for the gift of the Type 64. Obviously I can't review tanks that I don't have and this is one that I was really curious about. So thanks Lenticular and I look forward to talking to you guys soon. Take care.